Hello and welcome to Healthline 3. I'm Terry Simmons. Today we're talking with Dr. Charles Bird with WK North Laparoscopic Surgical Associates and we're talking about associates and we're talking about different incisional hernias and abdominal wall hernias, <coughs> what causes them, how they can be repaired, all things about that and especially laparoscopic surgery. So we'll be taking your calls throughout the show and as a reminder please make sure you're in a quiet room with your TV turned all the way down before making your call. And the number to call is 318-219-4569 and you'll see that at the bottom of your screen throughout the show. Dr. Bird, thank you so much for being here. Well, I'm welcome. I'm glad. <laughs> thank you. Well, this is a really interesting topic, and you and I have talked a lot mm -hmm. about this, and let's re remind everyone, in case they missed the tease a few minutes ago, about what exactly a hernia is. Well, many people have hernias and don't even realize they have it because it's not symptomatic, but most hernias are symptomatic because tissue is moving through a hole to a place it's not supposed to be. And if that tissue is a major structure like intestines or blood vessels, it can cause gangrene or death to form of that tissue. So we start paying attention to when one has a hernia form, we need to pay attention to repairing it so you don't get caught to the side effects that occur this way. Right, so we talk a lot of time if we don't know anything, we grow up thinking about hernias and hernia surgery. It's not the removing of anything, it's putting the tissue back where it belongs and then right. repairing the tear where it came through. That's and, right. and what are some of the reasons that it will cause gangrene mm -hmm. or other things? Is it because it restricts it or what the happens? If the, if the hole that it goes through is small and the tissue can push up there, it gets, it gets real tight and strangulates it. Mm -hmm. And uh, inguinal hernias develop strangulation and they get gangrene. Umbilical hernias tend to get it and a lot of the hernias we'll talk about in a minute and incisions can do the same thing. Okay, is there any type of hernia that's more common than others? Well, I've seen now four umbilical hernias over the past week oh. compared to inguinal hernias and I'll see incisional hernias less often but maybe, you know, one every other week or something. Okay, and the umbilical one, is that the one close to the belly button? That's the navel about? hernia, yes. Okay. You see a lot of those, four mm -hmm. in the past week. Is that, is that pretty common for your practice? Well, yes, they'll come in in, in waves, so to speak. <laughs> I don't know the real reason why I would see four or five in a week, then not any for a month, but yeah. it does happen. <laughs> and what causes them? I think a lot of times we think it's like you pick up something heavy or you bend a certain way. Is there any typical cause that causes hernias? From birth, the navel itself can have a tiny opening on the inside the deep ligaments and over time activities and stuff like that will make it kind of get larger or another thing is pregnancy <laughs> and a lot of women present with umbilical hernias because they've had several babies and a lot of pregnancies. Is that because the muscles are stretched out and Everything weakened? is stretched out. Yes. <laughs> Everything is stretched out. <laughs> yes. All right, anyone who's had a baby knows what that means right. and how that feels. <clears throat> yeah, Because mm -hmm. a lot does go on in the body after a pregnancy and right. getting ready for the pregnancy. It changes your body completely. That's right. Mm -hmm. It stretches everything out so the potential is high, yes. Mm -hmm. And do you find more women or men are prone to come see about it right away? Is it something that happens right away or does it, is it a gradual bulge? Will you, will you well, feel a pain right away? <laughs> Pain is the most common thing to present with, and men are the ones that finally come in because of pain. They don't care about how they look, but ladies will kind of want to look a little bit better and will come in sooner to have a navel hernia fixed. Ah, okay. Is it because you, it's visual? Can you see it from the outside? Would there be a bulge Well, on the it's outside? not really obvious in a lot of people, but because they <coughs> see themselves when they're getting in and out of the bathtub and bulge it, oh my goodness, then I tell them, well, you're not going to go to a nude beach. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> but let's fix it because of the fear <laughs> of injury current. Right. It's a good sign. You see yeah. something happening on mm -hmm. the outside like that. Go see right. you about it. Are there any other hernias that show up from the outside, or is it just that one because of where it's Well, positioned? incisional hernias are real common, and uh, a lot of people who have abdominal surgery have a lot of incisions used to go work on the stuff on the inside, and it can break open on the ligaments separate, and when that happens, tissue starts pushing back up through that hole, and that's what a hernia is, and I see a lot of those hernias every year. Mm, okay. And those are the incisional? Uh, mostly incisional okay. in that regard, yes. All right. 
And what is what is is that because of where it is? What what is the term incisional hernia actually? Incision mean? means an operation was done there and tissue was closed up and that ligament that that's supposed to bring it together, sew it up good, can separate and then things push up from the inside. Okay. And it's, a lot of hernias occur in these incisions because of many problems that a patient may already have in their body. Lifestyle, life activities and stuff like that. But a lot of times it's due to poor healing capacities that the body in that person does not heal things well. Oh, that's interesting. And a lot of people, there's something called collagen that people here talk about, but collagen is a, vas a major uh, device, for, uh, stuff that needs to be present for healing to take place and ligaments to come together. If you got a low collagen level, which starts occurring after 40 years of age, so to speak, then you start seeing more likely to have little hernias form. Oh, okay, I'm gonna ask you more about that in a second. We have a <coughs> caller for you right now though. Gordon, thank <coughs> you for calling. What's your question for Dr. Bird? Well, I don't have a question as much as I have a debt of thanks I wanted to give to him. Uh, back in 1987, Dr. Bird, you uh, formed a double hernia on me, and uh, it's still holding up very well. Uh, I doubt if you remember it because it's been so long, but I was up for a job, and I got thrown out of the job because I had a double hernia. And uh, so I came to you to get it fixed because I knew I'd have to get it fixed if I went to work anywhere. And uh, you asked me who the job was for, and I told you. And uh, so you went to bat for me and made a call to them and told them I can have that fixed and man ready to go in three weeks. And uh, we did that, and I did go to work. And uh, I just wanted to call, say thank you. And if anybody's holding back for getting anything done, you need to get up off your butt and go on and get it done. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could praise the Lord you got through those trials well. That's good. All right. Well, thank you, sir. And I just I just want to come back and give you some thanks for that. I never have, and uh, I still have. But uh, anyway, uh, well, I'm I appreciate glad. what you did for me. I appreciate what you did for me going to bat and telling me you could have me up and running in three weeks, which I did. Mm -hmm. And it was an oil fill. And I had some kind of tight three weeks, so I worked through it. I mean, it wasn't that bad. That's good. But uh, I, got it, I got it done. Well, you keep and, telling uh, your friends this can happen for them not to give up. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All right. Thank well, you much. You're welcome. Oh, Gordon, thank you so much for your call. <coughs> well, that There's so much in that call, Dr. Bird. Mm -hmm. For him to work in the oil field, and mm -hmm. you made that call, not only saved his body and his physical way of healing and have, kept, have him keep his job, but the yeah. oil field is really tough work, and he yeah. went back <coughs> after three weeks and was able to maintain his job for years to come that's right. because of that surgery. Well, that's a good benefit. Now, I have lots of people who ha are in that same situation. Yeah. And I've, I've operated on several people who work in the oil fields over the past several months to get them ready to go back out and do that strenuous stuff. And it's worked, so I'm happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that just shows, too, that someone, they do have a hernia and they do want to give up. They're scared that this means that mm -hmm. it's weakened or they can't do it. To know, to go see someone and get it repaired and repaired well and then heal mm -hmm. and then get back on, you can live your quality of life. Right. Right. Well, that was a lovely story. Love hearing that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have lots more yes. uh, patients out there with wonderful stories like that. So let's talk more about the collagen that you brought up because <coughs> we do hear a lot about that. That's a supplement that's very popular right now for people to be taking. And they talk about it being skin and hair and feeling good, but it really is internally for your healing, right? It affects all tissue. It's wow. part of every cellular activity to do their job of keeping things working. And uh, it's it's collagen is a good substitute for a lot of things and you can go to a store and, and buy collagen to put with your food and it will have a positive effect. So that is a really good positive yes. supplement. Mm -hmm. Why is that? What does collagen do to the muscles and the body? What well, is it? It's the cells that do activity all around and they got to form scar tissue or they got to have the potential to be able to develop the connection with the other cells that we have created. But if they have a deficiency in it, they don't stick together good. So they can't create a healing response. So 
but that's the least of my concern right now for hernia. So okay, let's talk about your concerns right now for hernia. Well, too often people, when they have hernia repairs done open with big incisions, there's a failure rate that can occur because of activity and a lot of tissue has to come together and heal. But the big thing about that is when tissue comes together, a big incision coming up and down the abdomen, you find out that the lower abdomen may not be much of a problem with the upper abdomen, it's more of a challenge, and then all of a sudden the tissue, scar tissue laid down will start spreading apart, then the hernia starts coming up. And this is what we gotta look at and see of a lot of people. But extremely overweight people, unfortunately, have this tendency to go ahead and do that. And people with, for example, I guess diabetes is a good example. People who have the diabetes, they develop small vessel disease, and these vessels don't circulate good in small vessels to help promote the healing response. So all these things are little side effects, but basically the normal repair we do is probably 75% uh, effective in the real, real sick ones. And when we do it laparoscopically, what we'll talk about, it actually improves it. Right, okay. We have Vana on the line for you right now. So hi Vana, thank you for calling. What's your question? Uh, my question, oh, my question is, is, I have a great oh, deal of difficulty walking. I don't... No. Okay, you must be the wrong one. Are you ready for me or was someone else on the line? Is this Vonna? Yes. Hi, Vonna. Yeah, go <laughs> ahead. We're ready for you. Uh, yeah, um, I had a high ADL hernia surgery in August of this year and a doctor just a regular surgeon did it. He wasn't a GI doctor, and I'm just worried if um, if he did it right. I mean, he did, he didn't use mesh or anything, and he pulled my stomach out from wherever it was. The hernia was behind my heart, and he pulled the stomach up and tied it to my esophagus. And now I have. Um, I have like a, a mucus or something just keeps coming out of my throat. I don't know if it's from the surgery or <clears throat> or whatever. Uh, just want to know is that normal? Not to, it's normal to go in there and do that surgery laparoscopic and not use mesh? Well, the real issue is, first off, when you said brought the stomach up and sewed it up into the esophagus, that was done for reflux, heartburn. Did you have did you have that problem? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, that was what we called a fundoplication. It's a deliverance preventing you from having reflux in the esophagus. And bringing the stomach down in the abdomen uh, is what we want to achieve too. And they do the repair of the hernia to prevent the stomach going back up in the chest. But the yes, recurrent sir. rates of the hernias are pretty high. But the side effect of your wrap that they did with the stomach around the esophagus is the next issue. And uh, I don't know whether you had a total wrap or a partial wrap. Do you know which one you had? No, I, I don't. It probably would have had. Uh, he didn't really explain it to me. It may have been a partial wrap. Well, like uh, I said, he didn't use mesh. You know, he didn't no, the partial wrap it. is just for the reflux. It's not doing anything for the okay. hernia. Oh, okay. And the hernia is a separate well, issue to be uh, worked with, and we put stitches in the uh, diaphragm to close that up. Yes, sir. Um, well, I followed up for the two-week visit with him. He still didn't explain anything to me. So. Um, well, where was your surgery done? Uh, it was done in Manny, Louisiana, in a little small hospital. But okay. he came, the surgeon came from down south. <clears throat> from down close to New Orleans, he came up. Okay, and he so he comes there every two weeks. Well, but I what, didn't have a. All right. Go you, ahead, Doc. Go you, ahead, Doc. You would be somebody that I would say I would do what we call an esophagram to evaluate the motility of the esophagus and see how the performance is for now. The hernia, yes, 
yeah. repair has been done. It's just a reflux operation mm -hmm. you're having a side effect from, which is not uncommon. It's not uncommon? No. Okay. But you need to be I, checked. Uh, you need to be checked to see if there is a narrowing of the esophagus that around this route that is blocking your esophagus from emptying out good into the stomach. And yes, that's a test that needs to oh. be done. Yeah, well, I've tried to get into someone to a GI office in Shreveport, and I don't have any luck getting an appointment. Um, well, well, you, tell you, you the gynecologist, what? aren't you? Aren't you the gynecologist? Ma'am, what's that? Oh, uh, I, I think uh, you, you're supposed to be my doctor in the gynecologist department, or are you? The, uh, uh, no, I'm a surgeon really that fixed the hernia. The gynecologist or the ones oh, that okay. can just scope you and stuff ones. like that. But oh, okay. Well, I need an appointment for that so bad, and I can't get into When I call someone, they say, well, another surgeon did your surgery. We, we probably don't want to, don't want to, you know, check you. So I really need an appointment to get all this checked. Well, what you can do is yeah. I don't mind seeing you in my office, and we'll try to figure out the, the deal, okay? Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Can and I get a phone number from your office? Or well, I, I'll I give you a phone number right now if you don't mind writing it down. I do. I have a, uh, I have a paper and pen right now. Okay. Uh, Area code three one eight. Okay. Two one two. Four seven nine nine. Four seven nine nine. And when okay. they answer the All phone. Right. You tell them that I said while well, I talked to you over the TV yes, that sir. I would see you in the office, and they'll get you set up. Okay. Okay. And you, Dr. Bird? Yes. Are you, Dr. Bird? Is that yes. your name? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. I sure will. I'll try to get that appointment. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much for okay. talking to me. Okay. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. That was a really important call to well, ask yeah, that We question. got her. That's the problem she needs to deal with. but. <clears throat> Let's pay attention now to the real problem of hernias. Yes. And an umbilical hernia is around a navel hernia, and the repair of these hernias forever was making an incision below the navel, putting a lot, a lot of major incisions and with stitches down into this defect, closing the hole up. And a lot of people hurt and stay in the hospital for a day or so, and then there's just a long time before they do any exercise. But the laparoscopic approach has changed that, that we, all these that we do are done as an outpatient, and they go home right afterwards. They can drive a car in two days and do light work. At extreme things, we wait several weeks before they can go out and do the extreme things, but they're comfortable and they're functional, and it winds up being a good thing to do. And I did the first one laparoscopically in North Louisiana, and uh, I've probably done maybe eight or hundred or a thousand, and good response, good recoveries, and that's what we want to see. But the way we do it is, when we go in laparoscopically, we got the defect. We don't put stitches in that hole to close it up. We actually put a a mesh patch overlying it. And uh, well, maybe I can see if I can show you an okay. idea. Hold that right up like we talked about, like to your chest now, right here. Can you bring this scope in kind of closer where they can see it? Okay. Now, this is a picture. You see over here, I mean right, oh, I'm sorry. Right here is a hole. And that's what this patient had when I fixed. And I took a patch down here, put it in this patch here, which see, once we staple it in, it covers up the hole and you're safe. And what's good about this, once this patch is in, then we let all the air out of the stomach, close up these three little incisions that we make, and they go home. And that's how you fix a hernia. That's right. And that's done laparoscopically. That's the laparoscopically. Okay. Now the other hernias that we have to worry about, a lot of them we can do laparoscopically, like we did this navel hernia. If the hole is small, if that hole is about like that in diameter, if it's about like that, 
we can usually patch that up easily. But if they got a hernia that's kind of opened up like that, we can't do that laparoscopically. We have to make the old incisional hernia go back in, close that tissue up. But in these individuals, we're now putting in biologic mesh. It's basically pig skin, what yeah, it is. Is it? It's there. And what happens, it grows into the tissue, becomes alive. And that mesh becomes part of the body and it shrink, strengthens up the ligaments that were usually used to close. It's now part of that to help support it and it works. And the recurrence rate from repair of incisional hernias is really reduced. Because those going in fixing incisional hernias on a lot of people, the recurrence rate may be 20%. But with this uh, using the biologic mesh, it stops everything. It works out good. Okay. And so this mesh is mesh, and could you describe what, what that, it's made from pig skin. Made from pig skin. And what is it used for in the, sort of, what is that, what, how useful is that is in the repair? What is that, well, what we, role does it play? <laughs> we actually do a repair closure of the abdomen with the stitches in there, then we put the mesh on top of it and sew it in. And when it sews in, it's fixed. And over time, that grows into it, and that skin, that mesh is so thick you cannot open it up, it can't tear it. So it winds up being the thing to do in the large meshes. And the reason, I mean the large holes, the people who have incisional hernias, and there's a problem with getting the muscle to come together, to bring it together because it's real tight and it's pulling on it, and that's why it occurs. We actually go out on the outside of the muscle and cut muscles from that backside that are attached to it and loosens it up so it will stay healed better. So that's the things we deal with. Wow, that's miraculous yeah. to do that with the body. Why is pig skin so? Is it so compatible with human skin? Is yes, that used? it's compatible and a, a human person can uh, connect with it. It's not a reactant type of thing. It is tissue, it works, yes. And that's just been for years. We've heard yeah. about pig hearts. We've yeah. heard about pig, and so it's just interesting that humans and pigs are so compatible yeah. that way. Right. And so does it, look both, like with everything else, does the body just grow in, adapt to it, and just... Yes, it grabs and becomes body. It becomes yeah. their own tissue, and it works. The part of their body. Yeah. Strengthens it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so abdominal wall <coughs> hernias that we talk about. Yeah, that's the thing that you can see without an incision, but incisional hernias are abdominal wall hernias, mm -hmm. and that's the thing we pay a lot of attention to. But there's something called diastasis recti. It's a real fancy word, but if you look at the abdominal muscles, you'll see you got running up and down something called the rectus muscle, and it is separated from one on the other side by about that close. But some people, like in ladies who are pregnant, it spreads apart real wide, and that bulges out down there, and people are afraid of it. That is not a true hernia, so to speak, but it can cause symptoms, and we have to sometimes operate on those, especially it's a painful thing that develops from it. And men who do heavy lifting, climbing ladders, reaching out and grabbing things and pulling, they will always complain of some kind of pain. And these are the ones we'll go ahead and fix. Now, women who've had lots of babies, they can tend to spread apart that area. And it's not a danger. It's not a way of hernia, I mean, the tissue getting caught and strangulated. But that's something we still repair in some people. Okay. And even though the recovery time is shorter with laparoscopic surgery, mm -hmm. it's still important to take care of yourself and heal. Yeah. How important is it to really, after hernia surgery, to really take it easy? And what's the most important thing to remember when you're healing mm -hmm. from hernia surgery? When we do it laparoscopically, the mesh we put in usually gets sealed and firmed down in a week or 10 days, pretty solid. But we, since we anchor it up to the tissue, it won't slide around and nothing can push through it. And so it'll work in there. When the hernia forms, it usually has a little sac coming up from the inside. You got the sac sitting down here and that comes up and down like that. That sac, we pull back inside the abdomen and put the patch over on the inside. And then the old pocket that was up there where it stretched out, we put pressure on the outside to get that tissue to stick back down where it belongs. And that's still done laparoscopically and they still go home. Still go home. Still go home. That's incredible. How long have you been doing this laparoscopically? 
Well, I did the, started doing it, went, nobody ever did it. We did, I did all the laparoscopic <laughs> surgeries, started in the 90s when we did, started doing gallbladders and then hernias and appendixes and nobody had ever done them before up here. So I've been doing it now, for, what, going on 30 years. 30 years. And, uh, and I man managed to see the complicated cases develop where we could go in laparoscopically and do it. I mean, nobody would have thought about doing an appendectomy laparoscopically. Now, I have not done an open appendectomy in 30 years. They've all been done laparoscopically, even if they've been ruptured and all the other things. We can go in, clean up everything, and get the appendix out, and, and a lot of the appendectomy, I did three appendectomies a few weekends ago, and they all went home the next day. Wow. So it's good. I have a technical question for you then because mm. I'm to figure this out. <clears throat> so you do it laparoscopically. How do you, if you're removing something like an appendix or an organ, how do you get it out? Because it's just the small Okay, it's a small right? hole. Gallbladders can be big and everything. We actually put inside, uh, through the scope, a something that's a bag that opens up and when it opens up, we go ahead and put that tissue in that, close it up, and we pull that bag out through a larger incision that we put our, a lot of things we put through, and then we pull it out. That's done. That's incredible. Yeah. Wow. And you said there's still times where you do have to use general surgery when it's something, a larger hernia or a larger... More complicated thing. ones would yeah. do the old-timey ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. What's an example of a very complicated hernia? Well... <clears throat> If, they, if a patient presents, and I did a lady recently who had an incisional hernia here, and she had three separate hernias going through Oof. this wound. Goodness. I went in laparoscopically. She had tons of adhesions of tissue adhered up to it. But I managed to take all that tissue down and saw that I could patch it. So I put in a patch over all three of them and fixed it. And that was done. But there are people that's so big, the defect hole is so big, you cannot do that laparoscopically. So we go in, making the incision, bring all that tissue together, and sew it in, and, and make sure they don't do a lot of strenuous things for a long time. But those people we have to do that are in the hospital three to five days, okay. rather than the laparoscopic approach. Mm -hmm. Still, three to five, I mean, that's really not very long when you think about no. that type of complicated surgery. Yeah. Yeah. So you've seen advancements, I'm sure, in this surgery over the past 30 years. Do you see it advancing, the laparoscopic <coughs> surgery advancing? Well, we, what we come up with, a lot of people come up with tissue devices to use and all little things like that and how we can dissect tissue out with things to try to coagulate bleeding. And th there are devices that came out a couple of years ago that makes it easier to go in and kind of cut around tissue and coagulate it at the same time so you can free things up and do things laparoscopically. So we do a lot of complicated, I do small bowel obstruction mm -hmm. laparoscopically where before this was available, we did everything open. But now man, we can on most of the cases go in laparoscopically, free that up and then go home sooner. They have less pain the next day. So you do gallbladder and hernia, what other type of surgeries do you do laparoscopically? Well, I do the complex hiatal hernias. Mm -hmm. I did a hernia not long ago, and the lady, all of her stomach was up in the chest. Mm. So Goodness. we were able to get it out of the chest and get everything worked up and everything fixed for her to eat and walk and stuff. Well, what's something you'd like, I just hate to close, because I just, this is so interesting, Dr. Bird, thank you so much for being here and talking to us. Um, what is something you'd like to leave our viewers with about hernias in general that you would like them to be aware of? One of the greatest problems we have with people who are experiencing a hernia situation, don't wait a long time to decide, I need to go get it fixed. If you got minor symptoms, minor discomfort, get it checked quick because the people who wait, it could be caught and then turn to gangrene, then you wind up having to have a bigger operation to get everything done. So get it checked out early. When early and small, it's easier and quicker to get well. Right. Know your body. Don't be afraid to ask. Just go in and, yeah. and see about it no matter what. Right. All right. Thank you so much, for Dr. Bird. It's just yeah. such a pleasure having you here. We really appreciate you and taking the calls and spending time with us today. We really well, appreciate it. maybe they'll listen. I'm sure they will. Okay. Thank you so I listen to you. Okay. <laughs> and everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time on Healthline 3. Enjoy your afternoon.